Paula Gessen Gürst and welcome for the team builder for week 5 of the PMC. We are versus the Carolina Pyros, coached by none other than Jay Spex. So, we are currently 3 and 1, got a very nice win last week versus a Raffles and his Melbourne Stone Pros, which was an undefeated team. But of course, we changed that real quick. And to top it off, uh, the team we face this week is once again an undefeated team. We got Jay Spex and the Carolina Pyros. He currently is undefeated as well. He actually is 4-0. Uh, oh. Yeah, if you're undefeated in year week 5, it has to be 4-0. And uh, yeah, so we are not really catching a break. What strong opponent goes on? And uh, yeah, other than that, I never played him. This is the first time I will play him. And uh, yeah, but looking at his team, I definitely know why he's undefeated. So let me go over that real quick. He got Landris I with Sheer Force. He got Mr. Man, Cresselia, Fortress, Sewali, Electros, Near Lego, Kirum, Keldeo, Mega Pinsa, Tauros, and Lilligant. The Sewali and the Near Lego being his Z move users. And he got a bunch of offensive threats. But of course, the big one, the, the big screen at his screen right now is Mr. Man. He got Mr. Man, he got Landers with Sheer Force, with the potential life of with the, I don't know, Yashi Berries are like the most, most lucky items on it. Uh, huge threat, huge threat, but then you get other things as well. Like Landers is not the only thing sent out. You got Mega Pinsa, you got Keldeo, you got Kirum, you got Nia Lego. All these things, and then something you got Taurus potentially as well. Litigant, not so much. Electra, Sewali, they're like not that offensive. And then you got like the defensive core of Cresselia and uh, Fortress. Fortress is like more like a hazard lead. Like Fortress, I never like Fortress as a heal type myself. It's like it sets up hazards and then it dies. That's usually what Fortress does. Maybe it gets a world switch off or an explosion, something like that. But Cresselia is like the perfect defensive mod. If you are scared about anything, you have Cresselia, you just build the Cresselia to deal with that and you're done. Doesn't matter if it's a ghost type, doesn't matter if it's a dark type, Cresselia can usually deal with all of those with the proper set but either way super offensive super scary team this these are these are the kind of teams you look at and you shit your pants when you want to prepare for it because you just see the all the offensive pros this team has um, but if you go a bit deeper actually in the game it's often not as scary because then you see that uh, his offense is very scary but if you can handle that uh, your own offense have a nice time go, uh, basically going through a team like that so yeah, I'm not expecting a stall versus him. This is definitely going to be a more offensive matchup. But uh, yeah, that's definitely that, just looking at his team. If I try to prep for that, you you are not having a good time because you want to have a check for everything, and then you kind of that doesn't take hits. That doesn't take hits. That gets tweaked over this. I can't deal with this. It, what if this set? I can load this to set up, and it's this such. A, I always like to prep more for more defensive teams, even though if they're more annoying to play. Like the prep versus them is a lot uh, ch more chill and uh, stuff like that. With such offensive teams, you always have to be scared. Like okay, you always need safe checks so that this offensive mode doesn't sweep me, this can't sweep me. You always need to fail safe for everything. And if there's so much on it, basically your whole team is out of uh, exists out of fail safe. So. <laughs> That's why uh, prepping for such uh, offensive teams is, n is on annoying, but uh, yeah, he got Landers Eye, of course. I uh, Many people think it's uh, too strong for the format, I want to say it's uh, not too strong, we can actually deal with that. So, and we can actually prove this game basically, that uh, Landers Eye is finally format. It, like, if if uh, Landers 6 owes me right here with like rough polish something, then uh, yeah, I might have to rethink that. <laughs> but of course our goal is not to only win, but of course to not let Landers shine. These are our sec two, two goals basically going into this match and uh, yeah let's go over my team real quick to see how we want to do that so first up we got of course Sneasel with the life of knockoff icy crash error ace and I shot enough speed for a max speed uh, Taurus and uh, yeah this is just very nice in general the only thing you really has to take is from this or resist that these things is the Keldeo that's why the error ace as well I was debating to put a uh, low kick for the Kirum or air ace for the Keldeo but overall I think uh, Keldeo is the bigger threat on my team than Kirum there are some with that, and, and of course, Kelly will resist both my stairs, whereas Kiro doesn't resist anything. Low would be just more, more, more there for more damage. Of course, this thing is nice it speeds the lander, which is not set up in Choice Scarf, and a life of Isaac Crash actually kills through the Yachi Berry. I actually <laughs> I remember that card very well because that was uh, versus, uh, in the match with MV. I actually didn't know that card, and uh, I, I knew that card after I stayed in. Uh, I had the Yachi Berry, stayed in with Sneasel, and because of that, I won. So, uh, yeah, if I would have known life of Isaac Crash would kill me, I never would have stayed in there. But either way, that's Sneasel. I don't have max attack, this special defense investment is there. So I can lift hits from the uh, Kelly. Of course, not a secret sword that's gonna like obliterate a, uh, 100 Sneasels since I'm four times weak to that. But uh, this spread actually I can lift a timid uh, max pressure like Hydro Pump from a Choice Scarf uh, Kelly from full. Uh, you will see a lot of prep for Choice Scarf uh, Kelly because that's kind of what I was after prepping. I was worried about that potentially could sweep me. 
But uh, yeah, that's Sneasel for you. I said of course nice for Landers as well, and then uh, Knockout is nice for the Cresselia. In general, nice fast hitting one. Like these fast mod, they're such offensive teams. Having just a faster mod is always nice. Especially if you don't have the choice gap and you can just in case which I moves with that. I said it's nice with the pins as well. I out prioritize that with quick attacks that are faster. So uh, yeah, Sneasel, I'm uh, looking like doing a very nice job in this game. Next up, we got Jimmy Neutron with the Assault Death Psy Shock Ice Beam Rose for U turn. Enough speed for Max Speed Sewali. And looking at his team, the most of his offensive threats, like Landris, Neil Lego. Kirum, Kelio, all special. All special taking. Landers can of course kind of be mixed, which is kind of annoying because knockoff, uh, Life of Knockoff does a button to this music set. But these are all special. The only real pure physical threat he has is the Mega Pinsir. And that's why I thought an Assault Destiny was very nice, especially since I get the perfect character for this team. Psyshock there deals with Kelio, deals with Neo Lego. Ice Beam deals with the uh, Landers. Aros here deals with the Kirum. And then Yuta just there for momentum. I have uh, enough for death, actually, that I can live. Like, the Assault Death is not enough, sadly, versus Landris. This is enough for death, so I can live two Life Orb Earth Powers from a Sheer, for sheer Force Landris. A lot of the Life Orb, of course, take it better, but Earth Power is not a true KO. This is music, basically. I feel, of course, it's an Oko. Maybe the Archibald is not an Oko, but then Earth Power is, uh, uh, is doing even less. So. Uh, that's always the problem with prepping with Landers. Like, the Archibald is such a lucky item, especially since I have a Sneasel, and like, if he's a Rock Poly set, he probably wants to lift the Ice Shard and stuff like that. But I need to be able to lift, like, have something for life of Landers as well. So, uh, that's the Assault of Mew right here. Like I said, Knockoff uh, actually has a chance to trick Kiyomi, since I'm not really physically bulky, but Mew uh, in general is, like, decently bulky. But I can take any one hit from the Landers either way. And, uh, yeah, that's the music for, like I said, great check to Kelly as well, great check to the uh, Neo Lego. And great check to the um, uh, Kirim as well. So that's that's uh, not only for Landers, that's just great in general for all his uh, all his uh, special offensive threats. Next up, we got Smash Catchem Tyrantium coming first time to a match with the Choice Scarf, Half Smash, Outrage, Dragon Claw, and Fire Fang with uh, enough speed. With the Scarf, I'm actually fast enough to outspeed everything up to max speed Tauros. I don't really need to outspeed any other Scarfers. The only thing he has which are slow in this are the Cresselia. Uh, the Fortress and the Electrox, and I'm not expecting any of these three to be choice cards, so <laughs> that's why I don't need any speed. That that allows me to run Element Nature once again. I have enough investment to live a choice card Hydro Pump from a Kelio. <coughs> Secret Talk once again will KO me, but if I have a Finny and I have a, especially a Mew round, I don't think he will lock himself into Secret Talk. More likely that he lock himself into Water Moves. Looking at my team in general, only have one Water Resist, but I have two Fighting this. So uh, yeah, and other than that, uh, he doesn't have Fairy. So, he has a steel type, Fortress, but like I said, Fortress are not expected to live long for that to have potentially Fire Fang, but he doesn't have Fairy, so spamming Dragon Moves with him is very nice. Spamming Smash Press in general is just overall nice, since Half Smash doesn't have any switch ins. Even uh, Fortress has potential to be 2 KO'd depending on his investment, just from Half Smash. I've got, it can miss, of course, which is a bit annoying, but uh, yeah, spamming Half Smash, spam spamming Dragon Moves, that's nice with Tarantrum, and it's kind of as well a fail safe. For the pincer, since I do have choice, I do have the pincer, and that's the only thing he has to me to hit me up is a quick attack, and even at plus six, that's not Oko and Tarantrum, just because it's a rock type and it's pretty good physical bulk, like 82 one, 119, it's pretty good physical bulk, so I can lift the hit and then Oko and fast smash, or like if you have some chip, I can just go for Dragon Claw, Outreach, and not miss. Uh, yeah, the Tarantrum there, basically just a late game sweeper potentially. If I identify the Scarf on team or I get rid of the Scarf, I can just spam Dragon Moves or potentially just quick Outrage and sweep for his team. That's Tarantrum for you. Next up, we got Cabra, the Cobalion, Hit Iron Head, Hit Power Ice, Stealth Rock, and Toxic Inner Speed for a max speed uh, pincer. And the Sugar Bear, of course, is there for the Lander, so I can just stay in versus that thing and go for Hit Power Ice and 2 KO potentially. That's where the Sugar Berry comes in, mainly because I don't really. Like, the, the problem with Lander is, like, since my Mew get 2 KO by knockoff, I don't really have a switch in. So that's the problem. You don't really have a switch into Mew uh, to the Lander. That's why I basically build every mod so it can 1v1 the Lander. Like, so you saw, the Tarantrum does have speed, does Oko with Head Smash, or oh, has a good chance to Oko depending on his investment. Mew takes any one hit, goes for Ice Beam. Uh, Sneezer does not speed, just goes for Ice Egg Crash. This thing can go Oko Pin for Ice, but it can lift the Shaka Berry. Um, even with my special attack, Pin for Ice actually does more than the Iron Head versus him, especially since I'm expecting him to be mixed with like Rock Slide and Knockoff. Like, if I had to think of a mix of a spread of Landers, I was thinking he would be Life Orb or Yachi Berry. I'm not expecting a, a Rock Ball set really. I would run versus me personally Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Rock Slide, uh, Knockoff. That's the set I would run versus me. With the life of oh, you actually very depending on what you want. I would probably put life up on that since it's not a sweeping set. 
And uh, yeah, with that coverage, I don't really have a switch into that, so I built just Aramon to deal with it. Kavan can just stay in, go for Twin Power Isis and kill him. And yeah, like I said, because he's probably mixed, he might he's most likely in naive nature, so might for that. That's why him Power Isis doing even more. Then I have in this because it's kind of the only Stairfrog I, I could fit on his team. And then Toxic there because Cresselia is a very nice switch into this thing. It's like I can't do anything with Cresselia, but I'm Toxic, of course, with this thing. So uh, yeah, that's Cobalion for you. Uh, enough spit death investment to so actually actually live a life of uh, Shear Force Earth Power from Landorus because without the investment, the Chocoberry isn't even enough. It would just straight Oko me since the special book of Cobalion sadly is not that great. But yeah, with Chocoberry and that investment, I actually can. And this thing, is, of course, is a nice uh, check to the Neil Lego as well, which can't really hurt me too much by having forbidden powers. Uh, since I resist the power gem, I'm immune to the uh, uh, poison moves, and then other moves he get doesn't really hurt Cavalium. Grass on resisted, Psychic is neutral, Dazzling Gleam is neutral. Uh, so, yeah, he, need, he would need to hit power versus me, and I passed that by Elko just with Iron Head. That's why I have Iron Head over Class Combat, because Iron Head just Elko's in the Lego and our speed. And yeah, with special investment in is from Neo Lego better. So yeah, that's Kobali for you. It's kind of my with Neo that kind of my, my check to Neo Lego, I want to say, but it's not the only thing I have. Next up is Walnut. Special defensive Walnut with the Cabin Berry Moonblast, Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, and Nature's Madness. I have enough speed to outspeed something that wants a speed creep, a max speed Modest Needle Queen. I didn't really, I didn't have anything really I want to speed creep on his part since I speed type with the uh, Cresselia or base speed wise, so I don't want to run max speed to guarantee or speed that. And everything else, like Slow and Cresselia, are like the Electros and stuff like that, like the things I mentioned earlier, they're not running ma much speed at all. But I still want to be faster than a lot of his team, so that's why I decided to run this speed. Then I have enough special investment to not be too TO'd by a choice spec, super effective hidden power from the Q room, and on the other way from a choice spec, Kelly as well. So Kelly is like base 129 special attack, Kyrum is 130, so Kyrum is a bit stronger there. And uh, yeah, that's how we feel it. Just typing wise, it's a great check to both the Caldeo and the Hero, but that's kind of where I see the problem. It's a very nice check typing wise, it's a very obvious check, so obviously we'll run hit powers. And if it brings both, I could see Tapofini going down versus one of them, and then the other one can just run rampant. That's why I think, for example, that Choice Scarf Caldeo could be a problem versus me. Choice Scarf Hero I can deal better with, but I think Choice Scarf Caldeo could be a problem, like if I kind of have to uh, use my Phoenix to deal with the Kyrum, then Keldeo, the door for Keldeo is opened up. That's why I have like a lot of investment to lift from Choice Cap Keldeo. If it's not Choice Cap Keldeo, I want to just beat it like my Sneasel, like my uh, Tarantrum and stuff like that. But yeah, I have the Cabin Barry for two things. Once, of course, for the Sludge Wave on Landorus and for two for the Nail Lego. That's why I have Hydro Pump over Surf as well. So, because with, after Nature's Madness and with Hydro Pump, I do KO uh, Nail Lego. Like, if he comes in on Nature's Madness, Hydro Pump actually does half to Nail Lego. Hideo is just way too specially bulky. Surf or Scald would do enough. So, I, that's why I have the Hydro Pump there, so I can just safely stay in with the thing if my Cobalt is weak and stuff like that. And I can just go straight go for the Hydro Pump and after Nature's Madness. That should KO an offensive Nia Lego. And uh, yeah, that's basically the whole deal. Tapofini. Other thing notice, notice, of course, I Tapofini and Misty Search. Toxic on Cabra is still very nice because it's mainly for the Cresselia, which is loading, so it's not affected by Misty Terrain. So that's nice as well. But uh, yeah, that's Tapofini for you. Like I said, main check to Keldeo and Hiram. And then the Care Barry is there to like learn and the Landers of the week, Josh Sight can kill that or to. Learn the uh, uh, Neo Lego just after I hit it with me. Because Neo Lego in general is a good switch into my Tower of Pini. It really looks like a fair move. Yeah, even Water was like I said, if I'm not offensive and I only have Surf or Scald, not even a 2 KO, so it could be a good switch into me as well. So after Nature's Man, this Hydro Pump does Oko the Neo Lego. And there's a high chance that he doesn't want to go for the Poison Move since Cobalion is such a great switch in. Uh, he might just create, be to switch into Cobalion and go for something else, like go for like a Hidden Power, Fire, or Ground, something like that. And that's where, of course, Tabofini chooses it because it's just so especially bulky. And uh, yeah, that's Tabofini for you. Now, you saw a lot of monster special investment, and I'm kind of weak. Like, I have the failsafe and smash catch him, but I don't really have a switch into Mega Pinza yet. And that's where my Rotom Heat comes in with Overheat, Wolf Switch, Hidden Power, Ice, and Defog. If my Defog as well, he doesn't really have good rockers. His best rocker is the Fortress. But uh, that's why I have Defog on D, because barring the uh, Fortress, he has Landorus and the uh, Neo Lego, which are not really great rockers. Like, they, they can easily get up rocks because they stay so many months out, but usually you want to just run offensive moves on them. There's like not really a uh, space on them, on their sets to put rocks on. So that's why I expect Fortress to have the hazards, and Fortress, of course, has to push for hazard stacking, which I do not like with my team. Like, I have all these intricate strats and to lift certain hits, but if they get too many hazards up, all, all these like, go down the pot and I still die to try to get Hydro Pumps. That's I want definitely a Defog on my team. Finny Saddle need all the four movesets I, got, I gave it. Moonblast I need to deal with Keldi or Kyrum. Nature's Mad is a Hydro Pump to deal. Nature's Mad over all this for Tresalian Ice as well. Plus I can stall him out of Moonlight and stuff like that. 
And uh, Ice Beam there, of course, for Landris, because Hydro Pump doesn't Oko. Ice Beam there does, and of course, it doesn't miss. And Ice Beam is nice for the pins as well. So, yeah, I couldn't really put def fit Defog on that, and that's why I wrote Technique right here with the Defog. Oh, wait, Wolfwitch, just standard coverage hit is obviously there for Landris. And then I have to Charlie Berry, which is mainly there for the Mega Pinsir, because Mega Pinsir can take any hits, sometimes physically, uh, that physically bulky. And with the Charlie Berry, I can actually live a plus to Stone Edge from a Mega Pinsir. And other plus factor, I can of, of course lift the Rockstar from Landers as well, go for HP Highs. You know the deal. Like, I have my Berry core right here, uh, Shooker, Kebaya, Charlie. They all have multiple purposes. Cabra is mainly there just for Landers, but with Warnot, it's for the near leg on the Landers, and with Rotomeat, it's for the Pinsir and the Landers. So, yeah, I have enough speed to outspeed a max speed uh, Electros. I just want to have some speed on that. I don't want to be like spat trapped by a uh, uh, Cresselia, which is suddenly faster than me. So I want to have like a at least some speed on my Rotom Heat and then I look at this team and I'm like why not give him enough speed for like max speed electros. So I don't think he will run max speed electros but it's like a nice number to hit just to be safe and uh, yeah that's Rotom Heat for you. Like I said it's my in switch in to the Pinsir because I Pinsir won't sweep me as long as I have Tarantula in my life and I don't miss. <laughs> but I don't have really have switch into Pinsir. Like, I can't switch a hard switch in my Tarantula to a Pinsir. But uh, barring I would be very fancy because if he like predicts that with like close combat or an earthquake, it goes down, then pins up can potentially sweep me. So that's why I brought me mainly as a switch into that. And uh, yeah, it's just in general just nice to versus team uh, world switching around. His only ground type is the landers, of course, for which I have to hit power ice and I can just aim with Charlie Berry. And yeah, of course I'm immune to earth power because I'm levitating. So yeah. That's the team for you. Let me know in the comments what you think. Who will be the MVP of this team? You can be excited for the match tomorrow. And uh, yeah, that's all for me for this time. I will see you tomorrow. Ciao.